Welcome to DIY Guitar Making. I'm at the end of my day here and I'm working on those two parlor guitars that you've seen me working on in a number of videos. And as I'm finishing up here, I just thought it would be a cool video to have you guys tag along for drilling my fret marker dot holes, which will be filled with mother of pearl, and also installing the mother of pearl side dots. Now this Wengi board is already complete, but I'm going to show you this whole process, how I got to this point on my other fretboard, my ebony fretboard, Macassar Ebony, which I'll be using on guitar number 87. Okay, that's the other part of the guitar. All right, so let's jump right into that. All right, so first things first, we need to mark out the locations for our face dots. And actually, before we mark out the precise location, the very first thing I like to do is just mark out the fret spaces that we're going to use. I want to do that very carefully and clearly right now so I don't make the god-awful mistake of drilling a hole in the wrong place. That's always a bummer. I always keep... This is actually a reject fretboard from the Martin factory, the, the one time that I visited there. I use this because it has some dot locations. I just use this as a template so that I can pull this up to my fretboard and just real quick mark out, you know, the 5th fret, the 7th, the ninth, and the 12th. So I know exactly where I'm placing those dots and I don't accidentally put, say, my 5th fret dot at the 4th fret or something like that. Uh, this is for an, or uh, an orchestra model 24 point, I'm sorry, 25.34 inch scale length fretboard. So it's kind of the wrong fretboard for what we're doing here since this is a much smaller scale length. So uh, instead of using that template, fortunate enough for me, I can just use the fretboard I just did, this Wengi one. So I'll just hold this up right here and I'm just going to make little marks here to remind myself which fret spaces I'm doing. So again, I'm doing the 5, the 7, the 9, and the 12. It's important to note that some people do the 3rd fret here. Some people don't. I am not doing it. Some people do the 15 and the 17. In fact, a, a lot of instrument makers do the 15 and the 17. I am not doing those either. I like a kind of sparse looking face of the fretboard. Now, if that bothers you as, as a musician, for the purposes of locating where you are on the fretboard. If that bothers you, keep in mind that I do have those locations, the third, the 15, and the 17, on my side dots. I always think of it as the face dots are for the audience viewing you playing the guitar, more or less for the audience. You, the player uses the face dots uh, a little bit. Uh, but the side dots are definitely for the player. So. I will leave the face dots kind of sparse and really fill out the side dots. All right, we need to find the center for where we're going to drill those dots. And we can do that by just marking X's in the fret space. And the center of the X is the center of that fret space. So if I take a small straight edge, like this little Stumac string action gauge, works good for this. If I take this and I line it up with two corners here, I can trace out my X. Now when I line this up, I always offset it by the thickness of the pencil. Otherwise, the thickness of the pencil would, uh, would push me off of my center by a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to visibly offset that by about that pencil diameter. Make my mark. Then go to the other two edges here, line it up, offset it by the thickness of the pencil, and trace my mark. Okay, center of that X there, that's our mark. That marks the spot. 
Now I'm going to be doing two, here if we look at this again, there's two dots at the seventh fret and two at the twelve. So how do I get those, right? We know how to get the center of uh, just a single dot space. So to get the double dot, what I like to do is just skip the seven for now, and we're going to jump over to the nine. We're going to mark out our X there, and then once we have the nine, we can take a straight edge and line it up with our two centers at the five and the nine, draw a straight line. That straight line will then split these boxes in half, and then we can just do the same thing in uh, the now two boxes, right? The now split fret space, we can get two X's out of it. All right, let me erase that and let's do it for real. So I'll jump to the nine, offset by the thickness of the pencil, make a line, go to the other corners, and make another line. Okay, got my two X's. And now let's connect the line between those two X's. Okay, that looks pretty good. Giving it the eyeball test. And the eyeball test, by the way, is just kind of step back and eyeball it and either it looks good or it doesn't to your eye. Sometimes you can pick out some really egregious errors by just taking a step back and looking at it. All right, so now I'm gonna do the seven here. And the 12. Okay, once again, give that the eyeball test. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna use an awl to punch out these locations, which will help the brad point on our Forstner bit find that center mark very easily. Now this you really gotta be a little bit careful with, and you kinda have to uh, pray to the Luthery gods here just a little bit and hope you get lucky because of just the very nature of wood, which is that wood has not only pores, but also it has alternating bands of strength and weakness, right? So that would be basically the grain lines and the area between the grain lines. And so we might be aiming to make a nice little all mark right at that center, but this piece of wood might have something else in mind for us. And by that, I mean, there might be an area of weaker grain, just a hair follicle off to the right of that exact center line there. And if there's an area of weakness off to the right, it's going to pull to the right then. It's gonna literally pull the awl to the side just a little bit. You can actually, you can fight it a little bit if you're very careful but also to some extent, like I was saying, you just gotta pray to the gods. So I'll tilt my all back like that, just so I can let the daylight in here so I could see. I like to kind of make a small mark at first, and then I'll pull it up like that when I have more confidence in my location, and give a nice press down just like that. So that went really well. Ebony is not too cantankerous in that regard as far as pulling off the lines, but I was having a real sort of struggle with the Wengi here because the Wengi has huge pores. And um, I guess also it, it has more, uh, more of a difference between the harder sections of wood and the softer sections. So it really wanted to pull my marks off to the side. Okay, just something to be aware of. Something that 
if you've done this before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably struggled with it. Here we are at the drill press. I've got a quarter inch Forstner bit right here. Forstner bits leave a flat bottom to the hole, like you see on these holes in the piece of scrap wood here. Uh, of, of course, you just need whatever size Forstner bit uh, for the dots that you happen to be using. Mine happened to be a quarter inch. It's the kind of thing you want to test in a piece of scrap wood first to make sure that that fit is super duper tight. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I can just turn the chuck with my hand so that I'm sighting right down one of the flutes of the Forstner bit. That just makes it way easier to see that brad point as I lower this down. And I'm gonna lower this with the machine turned off and as I place that brad point into the all punch there, I'm going to wiggle the board just a little bit. And what that does for me is it confirms for me that the brad point is in fact in that hole, okay? Because if I wiggle it, I can actually feel, in a very subtle way, I can feel the brad point bumping up against the side walls of that little impression that we made. All right, so once I have that firmly in the hole there, I am actually going to lock this down, okay? This is the way I like to drill these out. I know some people clamp this down and use a laser or something like that to then lower the drill, but I will actually clamp the fretboard down with the drill bit uh, before I turn it on. And that's my phone. Hold on. All right, so we're good to go. I'm going to hold the fretboard, turn this on. Turn it off, wait for it to power down. Very carefully extricate myself from here. Now, I don't feel the need to set a precise depth here because uh, the depth is actually quite variable. If I go too deep, I can just add a second dot on top of it. The material's cheap, so I don't mind doing that. And uh, if I don't go deep enough, I can always spruce up that hole a little bit more later on after we level and radius the fretboard after it gets glued to the neck and then to the body. So I don't worry about depth. I just eyeball it right now. All right, so let's drill out the other holes here. So again, I don't know if you saw that little wiggle that I gave the board. That's very important just to confirm that I'm in the right place. All right, and there you have it. So we're not going to actually install the mother of pearl into these holes right now for reasons that uh, aren't all that interesting and we're not really gonna get into. What I do at this point do is install the side dots like you see here. So those, I, I not only drill the holes, but we're also going to add the mother of pearl. And by the way, we're using mother of pearl for the side dots. We're not using that crappy plastic dot rod stock uh, that you see on, on so many guitars. I never really understand why anyone, even, even uh, companies that have to be more economical, I still don't understand why they use that stuff. It's not like these tiny little mother of pearl dots are expensive. Uh, I see a lot of amateur builders still using that plastic crap and you're, you're saving, you know, maybe a, a couple bucks at, at the most. Use Mother of Pearl. It looks better. Please. So once again, we want to make sure we get our side dots in the right place. So I'll just use the first board that I did in order to mark out all the fret spaces. And I'm doing a double dot at the 12. 
mark out all the fret spaces ahead of time so I don't screw that up. And now I always have a marking gauge that is permanently set up for my side dots. And so I can just take this marking gauge and rest it on the bottom surface and just mark that out. What I wouldn't want to do, by the way, is find the center of this height because this board is not radiused yet. So if you put your dots in the center of the height of the fretboard, then when you radius it, you would lose a significant amount of material and it's very likely that you would actually sand right into the top of that side dot. Not good. So this mark that I made with the marking gauge is lower than center which will actually leave my dots pretty close to centered when all is said and done and this is actually radiused. Not that your eye even cares about the dots being centered height-wise. All it cares is that all the dots are on the same plane, right? So this straight line that we just made guarantees that all the dots will be on that same plane. All right, so now I'm just gonna go to each fret space that I've marked and I'm going to use this center finding ruler here to mark uh, the center between the two fret slots. Okay, so we'll start with the third fret. Line that up. Actually, this is easier if you do it upside down. So line up the third fret. Okay, there's my mark. I like to take a little baby square here and square that mark. So now where this mark meets the marking gauge score line that we made, the center of that X, that's exactly where we're gonna put our dot. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mark out the rest of these. Okay, let's load this up into our vise here. Before I do this, it's a good idea to just take your fretboard and play a little air guitar with it. The reason for that is just to make damn sure that the location that you're about to drill your holes are facing up, right, towards you. Uh, it would really be a shame to accidentally mark and drill your holes on the wrong side, okay? I haven't seen that happen, but I have seen people come close to doing that in my workshops. All right, so we that's definitely, those holes are going to be on the correct side of the fretboard. And the first thing we're going to do is punch those out with the awl, just like we did before. Now what makes this a little bit easier in this case is the fact that for one of those axes of our X, we used a scoring tool, which means we can actually take this all and you can actually feel when you're in that score, which means that's very easy to be, uh, be sure that you're in the correct spot within one axis, right? And then you just have to line yourself up on the other axis. So here I can feel that little all mark there. I'm gonna bring that up and press. Okay, I've got my drill. place that and give it a little wiggle. I can put my fingers on it and give that drill bit a little bit of a wiggle just to confirm that I'm actually in the center punch mark. Another way to confirm it too is I can run this in reverse just for a second like that. And if the drill bit happens to be up on the sidewall of that dished out center punch mark, 
if it's kind of up on the sidewall of it, when you run it in reverse, it'll actually fall into the center, centering itself. Okay? And then you just switch back to forward motion and drill. Once again, depth isn't all that important. You just want to make sure you're deep enough to get this tiny little dot embedded in there. And then I'll take my dot and very carefully place it on there without dropping it. Okay, that went in. And it's always handy to keep a little piece of scrap wood nearby. I like to find something hard like ebony for this. And it's just so that I can take this, put a little corner of the wood on there, and then give it a little tap. Um, that I only need to do that if I have like an end of the pearl sticking up at an angle. If it goes in nice and easy, uh, you don't need to use this. Okay. All right, so that one's in. And I just add the tiniest dot of water thin super glue. The stuff is so thin that if I leave a little blob of glue there, instead of wiping it with a rag, I can take this rag and just touch that blob and it will wick up into the rag. Okay? And that's what it's doing with the dot too, by the way. Uh, it's actually wicking down into the joint, even though there really isn't m much space at all between the dot and the wood. It's super tight. That water thin super glue just works by capillary action and it finds those spaces and gets in there. It's really nice. It's really a, a miraculous thing that you can assemble a joint or, you know, two pieces to, of material super tight like this and then just wick the glue in after the fact. You can imagine how difficult this would be if we had to put the glue in first and then place the dot. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna do all the other ones. By the way, if you're fumbling with the dot, I'm just gonna show you something cool. So you saw me pick up this little dot and then carefully place it on there. A lot of people, especially if you have meaty paws, fumble around with these dots and you drop them on the floor. I see this all the time with students in the hands-on workshops. And here's a little trick if you are fumbling with it. This is called the Tuchin method. And I'll explain why it's called the Tuchin method in just a second. You can take just a piece of clear tape. This is packaging tape. Could be scotch tape though, doesn't really matter. And you can place your dot on that clear tape. And it is a lot easier to line up this dot with your hole just by holding onto the piece of tape like this. So there was a student in the class named Ron Tuchin, and he uh, came up with this in order to deal with his meaty paws. So thank you, Ron. You are a legend. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these dots. See you guys in the next one. Bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.